Um, I wanted to, to honor and thank the bishop for this chance to, to minister here tonight, the elders of the church, uh, the bishop's wife that's not here, uh, the other ministers that's here. I thank you for the honor to be here tonight. Also, I would like to thank my wife on, for being here tonight. It's, uh, it gives me great joy for her to be here. I, we was talking about Father's Day. I said, I want one thing. One thing only. Thing I want you to go to church with me that night. Yeah. And she goes, I'll, I'll do my best. And thank the Lord that, that she made it tonight. It's, it, it, it humbles me for her to be here tonight. And especially on, on, on being on Father's Day. And I'd like to thank everybody else that's here tonight. And all the kings and priests that's here tonight. You know, in Revelation, it calls us kings and priests. And you know what? If the Bible calls us kings and priests, we should be calling each other that. Because that is our titles. And you know what? That is, we do not stand in the anointing and the calling and position that God has put us in. We say, you know, the devil tells us, well, you're nobody. We believe that. But when our Heavenly Father says, you're a king, you're a priest, that's when we need to hold our head up and say, devil, yeah, in your eyes, I might be nobody, but in God's eyes, I'm a king. So shut your mouth and get out of here. But what do we do? Yeah, I'm, I'm nobody. No, I am somebody. I'm the child of the true and living king. Oh, but we don't want to walk in that. Oh, we want to have the pity parties. Church, it's time that we put the pity parties aside, we're in the last hours, and we better get about our Father's business. Amen. Uh, if you have your word, turn to John, St. John chapter 5, we read in verses 19 and 20. And when Sister Linda sent me a message that I'll be ministering tonight, I said, Lord, what's the word? He goes, who's your daddy? So that's what I'm going to be speaking on. Who's your daddy tonight? Who's your daddy? You know what? We might have knew our earthly father. We might not have. He might have been a great man. He might have been there for you all the time and, and helped you and everything. He could have been a deadbeat dad that was never around. He could have been somewhere in the middle. He could have helped you. He could, he could have tried to destroy you. But you know what? We got a dad. Hey. Oh, one day, he said, I am going to create, create man in my image. Yes, sir. Oh, I am going to breathe breath into his lungs. Come on. This ain't your breath that you're breathing. It's the Lord's breath. Right. He said, I will breathe the breath into them. My God. Oh, but what do we do? We waste the breath that he has gave us. We use it for everything else but praising Him and lifting Him up. St. John chapter 5. All right. Then answered Jesus, said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He seeth the Father do. For what things soever He doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Or most dear and kind Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before your throne tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this other day that you have gave us, Lord, to, to be in thy house tonight, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, open the blinded eyes and the deaf ears here tonight, Lord. Uh, uh, we can hear and see uh, uh, what the word is telling us tonight, Lord. Uh, uh, we will apply it to our hearts tonight, Lord. Uh, uh, we will walk in your statutes, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, we will be uh, uh, the children that you have called us to be. Uh, uh, Lord, we will let you be the father to us uh, uh, that you want to be. Uh, uh, Lord, that you have desire uh, uh, to be our father. Uh, uh, like like no other father has ever been. Uh, Lord, let us, Lord, uh, uh, surrender unto you, Lord. Uh, and Lord, let us be your, let us, let you be our father, Lord. We ask all this in thy precious name, Lord, and amen. 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 You know what? We can serve two different fathers. 
we got a Heavenly Father that we can serve and get the blessings that He has for us. Or we can serve the Father of this world. We can go out and we can do the sin and do the things that the devil wants us to do. Let him be our daddy. That is the problem with the world today. Uh, uh, they have walked away from the true father, uh, uh, the one that uh, uh, said, you know what? Uh, I want uh, a man made of my image. Uh, I want them uh, uh, to be a part of me. Uh, uh, but you know what we do? We want to be around him when it comes church time. Apostle Shook. We want to be around him uh, uh, when we need something. But that's all we want. We want to come in with our hands out and say, Daddy, give me, give me, give me, give me. But you know what? He don't want that. He wants to give us uh, uh, the blessings that he has in store for us. Uh, uh, but he don't want us to come in uh, and that's all we want. Uh, uh, he wants us to come in and say, Daddy, uh, I come in just to spend some time with you. You know, when our parents, uh, uh, when we're growing up, especially uh, uh, when we're little ones, uh, all we want to do uh, is be around Mommy and Daddy. I was a daddy's boy. My dad went somewhere, I was with him. As long as he was alive, most of the time, I, I, we was like this. I, I, we was always together. I, I, yeah, we fought uh, I like dogs and cats at times. Uh, but you know what? There was a bond between us. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, I said, I want to be like my dad. Right. The job that he had, I wanted. Uh, what he had, I wanted. I would walk behind him and say, I want to learn the things that you know. But you know what? I got a father today that I ain't got to worry about him leaving me. I ain't got to worry about him saying, no, I ain't got time to teach you. All I've got to do is come in humbly and say, Daddy, I teach me. Yes. Lord, I want to know what you want of me. Lord, I want to know what what I can do for you. Oh, but what do we do? We come in. Oh, I am going to prayer. Uh, Lord, uh, I need this, this, and this. Uh, uh, Lord, work on this. Amen. And we go about our business. But how many times, uh, Apostle Shook, do we say, uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, what do you want? Uh, da uh, Daddy, what do you want to tell me? Oh, uh, uh, we don't go in. Uh, uh, we don't wrap our arms around him in prayer and say, I'm going to hold on until uh, 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 I get uh, that warm, uh, fuzzy feeling. Uh, and I know that I'm pleasing unto you. Oh, uh, down here, uh, uh, growing up, we want our praise uh, uh, from our parents. Uh, uh, but we don't worry about the praise from our Heavenly Father. We just want uh, uh, him to be an uh, uh, ATM and uh, coughing out everything that we need. It don't work that way. You know what? When we got kids and they're being obedient, you give them the extra things. Uh, but when they're being unruly, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, you want that game, you're not getting it. Because you have not done what you've been supposed to do. Oh, you, you, you want to go to the movies? No. You have not done your chores around the house. But when they come in from school, uh, uh, they do their chores and they get their homework done. Uh, and the dad's at work. Uh, Mom, what can I do around the house to help you? Uh, and they come up uh, and they, they're watching TV. Uh, hey, come on, let's go, let's go for a ride. You take them to the store and you buy them something uh, because they've been faithful. Uh, uh, they've been true and they showed you their love. Oh, but what do we do? Uh, uh, we don't want to show the Lord the love uh, uh, that, he so, uh, uh, that He desires and that He deserves. Uh, uh, we just want to, uh, uh, to tell Him uh, uh, with the lips, uh, uh, Lord, I love you. Yes, yes. It's easy for me to tell the bishop I love him. It's easy for me to tell Sister Linda I love her. But you know what? When I show them by my actions that I love them, they know it. We want to give the Lord lip service, but we don't want to give him heart service. Oh, we don't want nothing coming out of our heart uh, about malice and anger and uh, uh, envy and strife. Uh, and when somebody else is getting blessed uh, or somebody else is getting advanced, uh, uh, we want to get an attitude about it uh, instead of saying, Lord, bless them. Uh, uh, Lord, I'm happy for them. Uh, but what do we do? We get jealous. Uh, uh, just like kids does in a family. 
When you got uh, uh, siblings and the one is uh, uh, being a good child and doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, and the parents is blessing them and, and giving them things, and you're uh, uh, you're the unruly, uh, uh, you're the one that's always in trouble, uh, uh, you get mad. Well, well they's your favorite. You can be the, the Lord's favorite too. You know, he said, told David, you're the, he was the apple of God's eye. Well, you know what? My word tells me that the Lord has no respect to person. That's right. So if he was the apple of God's eyes, Pastor Steve can be too. Amen. But all he's got to do is do what his daddy tells him to do. Amen. All he's got to do is say, Daddy, what do you want? Oh, that, you want that? Oh, that's not a problem, Lord. I got that taken care of. And do it with a joyful heart. Amen. How many times... How many times does the Lord say, I want you to, to go to talk to that person? And uh, Lord, I don't want to do it. I don't want to have to do this. Lord, they don't know me. I don't know them. They wanna, they're going to think I'm crazy. And you go, you know what? The Lord loves you. Turn around and walk off. If you're going to have that attitude, don't even do it. Because you have not accomplished what the Lord wanted. And the Lord is not going to honor that. But you say, oh, let me talk to this man. That ain't no problem. Lord, give me the words. Let's go. Hey, come on, Holy Ghost. Let's go over here and talk to this person. I'm, I'm anxious to find out what you got to tell them. And you go over there and you, you, you talk to them and, and you just talk them up and you tell them what the Lord wants them to hear. Okay, Lord. Hey, that was easy, Lord. I'm glad you did it because I couldn't do it. But uh, what's next? What did what, Daddy, what, Daddy, what do we do now, Daddy? Well, what do we do? We mumble and complain too much. We say, Lord, give me, give me, give me. But you know what? It's me. It's, Lord, what can I do? What can I do? He says, I will meet your every need. So why aren't we begging him for something? We are heirs and joint heirs unto, unto Christ. And if we are heirs and joint heirs, everything that he's got is ours. All we got to do is say, Lord, I need this. But what do we do? We murmur and complain, and we get jealous because somebody else is getting more, a, a bigger blessing than us. But the question is, what did they do to get that blessing? How obedient was, or was that person? In Luke, the second chapter, Jesus and Mary and John had went on it, uh, City and they would they was on their way back. And I think it was like a day's journey out. And they started looking for Jesus and uh, a bunch of people together. They thought, well, he's with some of the other family or somebody. And then they started looking for him. Well, he's not here. Well, Mary being a mother, she panicked. She goes, honey, we, we gotta we gotta find that boy. He's my son. I gotta find him. But they go back. They find him in the synagogue's teaching. When, my, when Mary says something to him about it, because he said unto her, How is it that thou sought me? Was ye not that I must was be about my father's business? Are we about our Father's business? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing for the Father? Uh, are we saying, Daddy, uh, I want to be in your business. Uh, uh, you know, down here, uh, uh, the bishop can have a, a business uh, and train his sons up to take it over. Uh, and a lot of times the kids don't want to do it. Uh, they don't want to follow in Daddy's footsteps. But you know what? I want to follow in my Daddy's footsteps. You know, you take Pastor Steve, He's out, his boys are following him, and they're trying to walk in his footsteps. They gotta jump. Yeah. Especially at the ATR now. But you know what? My daddy, I ain't gotta jump from foot, footprint to footprint. He takes small steps for me. And then when I get stronger, I'm mean, not get to, uh, where I can take make bigger steps, uh, I he takes bigger steps. He doesn't run off and leave me. Uh, uh, he walks slow. Uh, uh, if he has to, uh, uh, he'll turn around and pick me up and carry me for a little while if I get tired. Uh, uh, but you know what we do? Uh, uh, we start getting tired. Say, so I give up. Uh, uh, God don't love me. Uh, uh, 
yes, he did. Uh, the Lord died on the cross. Uh, that we can have life and have life more abundantly. And if that ain't love, I don't know what is. Oh, it's time that we start serving the Father that we have. People say, you know, my dad was never around. I never knew my dad. Well, you know what? Brother Todd, you might never knew your dad. But your daddy, he loves you. And he's got his arms wrapped around you right now saying, my son, I love you. And I'm proud of you. Just keep it going the way you're going. And I'm going to use you greatly. But you know what we do? We start comparing the Lord to our natural dad. And there is no comparison. That's like comparison to the sun to dirt. When we start comparing them, we bring in God down to man's level. And he was never supposed to be there. We're supposed to be going up to his level. Yes, sir. When we start saying, Lord, I want to walk in your footsteps. Lord, what do you want out of me? Lord, what do you want me to give up? Lord, can I get close to you? Lord, I'm lonely. Can you come down and comfort me? And you feel those arms wrap around you. And such peace and calm comes over you. Yes. You might say, that sounds stupid. It's not. Because I have felt it. I have been in prayer and I felt the arm come around my back. Yeah. Yes. There was no way possible there was a nightstand nice here. There was no way possible for anybody to be between in that nightstand. Nice and that's the way that arm came over. Yes. Why? Because the Lord wanted to let me know that he was there with me. Amen. Because he loved me. He took the time out to come down and spend time with me. Because he loves me. Yes. He goes, you know what? You want to spend time with me? I'll come down and I'll spend some time with you. But the reason he doesn't come down and visit us because we don't have time for him. When we start making time for him, we got time for work. We got time to watch TV. We got time to go play golf. We got time to go boating. But we don't have time to spend with our dad that loves us more than anything. Oh, there is nothing that, is, that he loves more than us. But what do we do? We make excuses not to spend time with him. Yes. Luke 11, 11. If a son asks bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will you give him a serpent? Or if he asks an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then being evil knew how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to, you, to them to ask of him? If we know how to do good things for our kids because we love them, how much more can the Lord do for us than we can do for our kids? How much more will he do for us if we dishonor and serve him and praise him the way that he deserves to be praised? We come in here on Sunday night or Sunday morning or a midweek service and we sit there with our arms crossed and say, you know what, I'm tired. I don't feel like praising that. I don't want to praise him tonight. Uh, but you know what? Uh, he says to praise him. He inhabits our praises. Years ago, I was, I, I've been at work all day and I came to church and I was tired. And I did not praise him. I just sat there, I, well, I stood there most of the time, and I didn't praise. And my mind was somewhere else. And when the men, when the preaching started, it did me no good. I felt like I should be at home. I said, Lord, I will never do this again. That was the worst service I was ever in. 
And it was all my fault because uh, I didn't want to spend time with my daddy. I had other things on my mind. Uh, I didn't give him the honor and the glory and the praise uh, uh, that he deserves. Uh, uh, when we come in here uh, and we start praising him and worshiping him, uh, uh, then he's going to move. Uh, uh, not only in here, uh, uh, but when we're at home uh, or in our vehicle uh, or in Walmart uh, or at work uh, and we start lifting his name up, uh, uh, he's going to take uh, a pleasure uh, into lifting us up. Yeah. Oh, you want to get promoted? To, uh, you want to find favor with man? Uh, uh, find favor with God. Let him be your all in all. Yes. Let him be the one that you lift up. Uh, uh, don't worry about yourself. Uh, uh, so many times we say, well, uh, uh, this one here is getting promoted at work. Uh, uh, this one's getting promoted at church. Uh, uh, this one's getting this, uh, and that one's getting this. Uh, uh, but what are we doing for the Lord uh, to inherit those blessings? All right. We think this because we come to church that the Lord entitles us uh, to the blessings of the Lord. It does not. We have got to serve him with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Uh, uh, when we say you're my all in all, uh, uh, we are married to you. Uh, uh, we're going to praise you no matter what. Uh, uh, my wife, uh, I, love, I love her more than anything on this earth. If, I, if the Lord, it would be between her and the Lord, I say, honey, I'm still going to love you. But you're going to come second. Yes. But you know what we do? Well, if I go to church, my spouse is going to get mad at me. No. If you go to church, eventually, they're going to see how much you love the Lord. And they're going to see Him in you. And they're going to be by your side. All right, the Word promises that He will save our whole household. Amen. But we don't believe that. We will say that he will, but honestly, truly, we don't believe it, but we don't stand on it. We, don't deny, we do not declare it, that the Lord said, Lord, you said that you will save my whole household. Now, Lord, I'm standing on your word, Daddy, and you have got to do what you said, because you can't lie. But he ain't going to do it as long as you're double-minded, uh, wishy-washy, uh, and not being obedient unto him. How can he? Just like your children, you can't bless them if they're being disobedient. And we're no better than our kids is. Our Heavenly Father is more strict than we are. Because He loves us. Yeah. We'll let our kids buy with things. Parents, mothers will say, well, when your daddy gets home, I'm going to tell him you're going to get a whipping. Well, by the time daddy gets home, mommy forgets. And that kid never gets a whipping. And the mother's done lied. And she's going to stand accountable for it. Or dad says, when I get you home, you're going to get a whipping. And he does not. He is lying. He's got to get forgiveness, plain and simple. A lie is a lie. And ain't no such thing as a little white lie either. I can't, find a, I can't find one in the Bible. The Bible says liars have their place in the lake of fire. Right. Yes. But you know what? When we start serving the Lord, the way that he has called us to be and the way he wants us to be, then he will start blessing. When we start saying, Daddy, I want nothing from you today. All I want from you is just to be closer to you. Lord, I just want more of you than I had yesterday. You know what? I was until I want more of the Lord tomorrow than I do today. I want more of the Lord when this service is over with than I had when it started. And I want more of the Lord when I go to bed than I did when I left here. I'm greedy. When it comes to the Lord, I am greedy. I've got to have more. Then the 10 day lock in, I told the bishop, I said, you know what? I don't want more of the Lord. He just kind of looked at me like, you're stupid. I said, I don't want it. I gotta have it. And that's the way we should be. People says, I've got to have this, I've got to have that. No, you don't. All you have got to have is more of the Lord. When you got more of the Lord, uh, then you're going to get the blessings. Uh, you're going to get the things that uh, uh, he has for you. Uh, uh, your cup is going to be running over. Uh, uh, you're going to be the head and not the tail. Uh, uh, you're going to be blessing people. Uh, uh, you want to bless people uh, and you want to do things uh, uh, to help the church uh, and other things. I uh, uh, get more of the Lord uh, and be the child of God that you've been called to be. Uh, uh, because when you are, uh, uh, he's going to open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessings that he has for you. 
Oh, we wonder why we're not getting blessed. We're a bunch of, of unruly kids that's out causing havoc, that's terrorizing the community, and that we're not bringing honor to our Father. When we start bringing honor to our Father, and we're out terrorizing the devil instead of the community, we're out blessing the community, then the Lord is going to open the windows of heaven and pour, pour out the blessings. That song they were singing by him working when we don't see him working. The reason we don't see him working is because we're not listening to the Father. We're trying to do our own thing. You know, when you turn 18, oh, I'm an adult. I can do what I want to. 21, I'm moving out. I'm mom and dad, you can't tell me what to do. I'm an adult. And we think the same thing with the Lord. I am an adult. I have been saved for this many years. I know the word. I can do what I want to. Wrong. When you get that rebellious spirit, and what does the Bible says about rebellions? Is the same as witchcraft. So you know what? You better get that spirit to get, get delivered of that spirit real quick. And be, get a submissive spirit unto the Lord and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Just like the Lord said when he was in the garden. He said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. But not my will. But thy will be done. That should be our, our prayer. Lord, not my will with my life, but your will be done. Whatever you want. How big or how small it is, Lord. I've surrendered my life. I've laid my life on the altar. And I've sacrificed it unto you now, Lord. You do what you want to. We know to do good. But we don't do it. And that's a sin. We want the blessings, but we don't want to pay the cost. We want to be the child of God, but we don't want to make the sacrifices that we need to make. Church, it's time that we make a decision tonight. Who we want to serve? Are we going to serve God? And follow his word. Let him be the dad that he wants to be to us. Pastor Steve, he wants to be a great dad to his kids, to his boys. He wants to give them everything that they want. And bless them and teach them God's ways. But you know what? My daddy, he wants the same thing for me. He wants the same thing for each and every one of us. But we have to submit ourselves. Say, Dad, what do you want? Yes. Dad, what's in my life that's not pleasing to you? You know what? You can call him Dad. He doesn't care. He, 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 it says that he's our Father. And when you say Father, that's one thing. But when you say Dad, you're making it personal. That is my Dad. You know. Kids want to go on up there like to brag about what their dad can do. Don't get me bragging about what my dad can do. He can form the, the, the world out of nothing. He can make man out of dirt. That's what my daddy can do. But you know what? He can also come down and comfort me when I'm lonely. He can come down and, and whisper things in my ears for me to know. He can take me by the hand and lead me down the right path. But I have got to submit unto him and let him. Yes. I can't say, you know what? You're my dad, but I'm not going to listen to you. You know, if Pastor Steve's sons will say that to them, to him, I believe they're be a little bit of problem right there. I believe somebody might be not sitting down for a little while. But you know what? Our dad's not like that. It's okay, you don't want to do what I tell you to, that's fine. 
One of these days you will. The prodigal son, he got tired of living under his dad's house. He says, Dad, I want everything that's coming to me. The king divided everything up in a few days. He goes, adios amigo, I'm gone. He goes out, lives in the world, does the worldly things. And then a famine hit. And what does he have to do? Take the lowest job there was, feeding pigs. And one day, he was starving. He goes, you know what? The servants of my daddy's house is better off than I am. I don't want to go home. I want to tell him, Dad, I sit before God and before you. He's willing to be a servant when he went home. But this is how dads are. Dad was watching for it. He was probably standing up with him going, I know you're coming home, son. I don't know when, but I know you're on your way. I'm waiting on you, son. Come on home. His servants probably brought him his meal so he could be watching for him. And one day, he seen an object coming down the road. He goes, yeah, I knew it. Here comes my son. He takes off, running fast as he can, out, fell up on his son's neck, and kissed him, and walked him home. Yeah. Here comes the servants right behind him. He goes, put a ring on his finger, which means he's part of the family. He's got his back in royalty standards. Put the robe on his shoulders, which means he's my son. Put the shoes on his feet. Go out, get the fattest calf we've got, the best we have, and prepare dinner. My son was lost, but now he's found. And this stake, every time that one of us comes to the Lord, there's that celebration in heaven. He said, my child has come home. It's still a party. But you know, the other brother, it's so like a lot of Christians. He gets jealous. Yeah. Oh, I've been here all this time. You never threw a party for me. Well, everything I got yours. You could have done it at any time. The church is too jealous of each other to be of any effect to a lost and dying world. When we see someone get saved, Someone gets blessed, and we get happy, and we start rejoicing, and we mean it. That's the key thing right there. We got to mean it. The Lord is going to bless us. Don't do it for the blessing. When someone gets saved, they rejoice because there's one less person going to hell. The devil has been defeated one more time. You do not know what that person has went through to get back to the Lord. But we get jealous. Well, everybody's talking to them now. They ain't got time for me. I'm, I'm here all alone. But you know what? You should be right in the middle of that rejoicing and helping that person. Church, who is your daddy tonight? Are you serving the true and living king? Or are you serving the rulers of this world? the principalities and dark places. There is too many that's believing the lies of the devil and not the truth of the king and not listening to what their father is telling them. If there's anybody here tonight, there's only two people that knows the answer to this question. Will you stand out with the Lord? I never close out a message unless I give an order call. Only you and the Lord knows where you stand. You could be the apple of his eyes, or you could be as far away from him as that prodigal son was when he was feeding the, the swine. Only you and him knows where you are right now. In your heart, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you cannot say, if I will leave this world at this instant, that heaven is my home. If you can't, don't know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, come and 
accept him tonight. Let him be your daddy. Give him the Father's Day present that he would love to get from you tonight. He's saying, you know what? I want you to come home. I'm standing here with outstretched arms waiting to wrap my arms around you and welcome you back. You have not gone too far for him not to welcome you back. You might say, well, I've done, done everything under the sun. But you know what? Your daddy still loves you. And it's like if your child will walk off from you and will come back, you would love them. Yes. You still love them. Yes. And he still loves you. This message was tonight by, by coincidence. You're not here by coincidence tonight. Night was ordained for, for tonight. So if, if you cannot truthfully say beyond a shadow of a doubt that heaven is your home right now, come up here. We'll pray with you. Or if anybody needs prayer for anything at all, I don't care. If you got an ingrown toenail, that's not too small for God. If you got a stage four cancer, that's not too big for God. Amen. He can do both of them. If anybody needs prayer, come up while the water is troubled. He's wanting to meet your needs tonight. He's wanting to say, my child, I'm here for you. Child, my child, come up. I'm waiting on you to make the first move. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.org. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.